there was a Hacker News discussion I was reading this morning. Somebody had posted an article that was like, hey, our, our shared library is really a good idea on Hacker News. And he did some statistics on Ubuntu or some distribution. And he was generally like, no, you don't really need shared libraries. Now, I think his analysis was a bit flawed. It wasn't quite a legit comparison. But the discussions about it were so off base. Somebody was like, yeah, but you know, a default Ubuntu distribution has more than 400 processes running. And just check and see how much shared memory is there in, in the process table report. And that tells you how much you'll save. And I'm just like, you think it's a good idea to have 400 processes running? Like, isn't that kind of your problem? Isn't the problem not really shared memory at that point? Like, why do you have 400 processes running? I don't know if that's a true number, but that's what this poster said, so I kind of believe it. The operating system itself should be small. Most things should happen in user space, right? So if you're going to talk to the network card, that should not go through the operating system at all, period. Um, so you probably need, if you're going to access controlled devices or something like that, you need to have some kind of security token handoff, right? So that you don't need to go through the operating system to go over the network. Applica uh, programs should be sandboxed from each other by default so that you don't have to worry about security. It should be very heavily sandboxed where most programs cannot really do that much, right? Um, and then you figure out a way to make a desktop environment work where there's you know, some common place I mean, I haven't thought about that part enough, but you, you do something to make it user-friendly for a desktop environment, but by default, a program can't just look at the file system. Like, that's not even a thing. And then most of your security worries go away, relative to today, right? Processes communicate by direct memory mapping, usually. So instead of, like, opening a pipe to another process that you put data in and it gets marshaled by the operating system and sent back out. You just map a mutual buffer with another process and you just start mem copying data structures into there or whatever, right? And that's your basic communication mechanism. Um, it's probably some other stuff I'm not thinking about right now, but uh, that's sort of where I would start. But so with this programming language, I sort of started in a particular place and then all the good stuff about it ended up being a lot better than my starting point. And so I'm hoping, and I think it would be the case, that if I were to start on an operating system someday far in the future, it would rapidly end up getting better than the initial idea, because that's what always happens. OpenBSD has that unveiled. No, but the point is it can't be an additional thing. It has to be the basics of how the operating system works in order to be valuable. Well, in order to be as valuable as it should be. So there's no installs. Like, you just run a program, right? You try to avoid even invisible installs. And I'm not sure what the OS can do to enforce that, but it should do something. Um, there's kind of not that much point to having an install if your program is not allowed to access anything outside its own space, because, like, what would it do during an install, right? Um, Regarding libraries, dynamic or shared or whatever, you would make all code position independent, right? So you don't have this question about static and dynamic libraries being a different thing. You would just have one library type, which is um, could either be linked statically or dynamically, and that's just a thing that you decide when you link it, right? Um, the content of the library is the same either way. And Hopefully, by default, everything is actually statically linked, but in such a way that within the executable file, you still have the information of what library that came from. So if you want to do security patches, you can do all the security patch things that the people clamoring for dynamic libraries say that dynamic libraries are required for. They're not. Um, you can do them with static libraries as well, as long as you don't destroy the information. And maybe one of the most important things about how user space works in this hypothetical operating system is that you don't have this really bad duality. I have to give a speech in part about why this is terrible, but 
we have a great deal of complexity incurred because we have this duality between command line programs and library functions. I've talked about this on stream before, but those should just be the same thing. Um, with command line programs, maybe having some additional functions that provide some interface functionality, but that, for example, if you wanted to use a grep library, that's actually the same as the grep program. The program and library are the same thing. And that's a way to massively reduce complexity in your system. Can a new OS succeed given the problem with drivers? You should not allow drivers in the way that we do today. It shouldn't be a thing. The biggest challenge isn't the technology, it's convincing a critical mass of developers to write interesting, useful apps for your operating system. Maybe, but again, I'll refer you to what I said before about believing things that everybody else believes. That's what convinces most people to not make an operating system, right? So like, on the one hand, maybe it's true, and maybe that's really hard. On the other hand, if that's what keeps people from making the right operating system that's better that would have taken over by now, then if you inherit that belief as well, then it will also keep you from doing that thing, right? So you have to kind of wonder which of those things is true. Oh, and the other thing I have to say about that is you're saying that like it's a good idea to have a ton of software on your operating system. And I don't think that's true. I think we have way, way, way too much garbage software today. And I would rather have much less software, but that was actually good. And booting is easy. The rest of it is a bit more problematic. I mean, I'm not that convinced. Like, yes, if you were trying to duplicate everything Linux does, that's a lot of work. But what I'm saying is the correct operating system for the year 2021 and beyond doesn't do most of what Linux does. I don't think we should be doing almost any of that stuff, right? So that's the secret. Graphics though, I mean, to start with, I would just not support graphics accelerators because they're terrible to deal with. Um, and I would just hope that by the time we had the OS running in a reasonable way, that something in the graphics adapter space would have changed enough that we would be able to, to do something better. Like if you imagine that compute shaders are good enough, which they almost are now, maybe your driver, maybe you do need to make a driver, but it's just a very, very thin thing. That's just enough to let you run a compute shader that writes to GPU memory, right? And then, I don't know, I, I have no idea. Like that's, that's a whole thing that, separate. Same language for programming and batch scripting. Well, I don't think batch scripting is usually a good idea because it usually turns into programs. So just write programs. Path just being a semicolon delimited string is bad. Yeah, that's terrible. You would make your path not be that. But also, is there a path? Like, I sort of dispute the idea that there would be a path because um, you know, programs can't read the file system arbitrarily. So maybe, maybe the equivalent of your path is like your user has um, a folder with links to all the places that it looks for executables, right? So it's automatically much more structured and much more easy to change from a user standpoint, I guess. That doesn't exactly work if you want to run something with a substitute path, though. So maybe that's not a good idea, but um, again, I'm not sure exactly what role a path plays, honestly. No registry for sure. Yeah, I mean, there's all these things that we've seen from history, how annoying and nasty they get, and just don't do things that way. In this article that they were discussing, whatever distribution this guy did, you know, he ran over all the executables on the machine and uh, you know checked what was linked by who. Guess how many executables were on the machine? Four. 
4,500 executables. Do you really need that to, to have a computer with like a desktop? Do you really need 4,500 executables? Is that a good idea? Chrome runs like 10 just for a browser. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the thing, the case of Chrome is a little bit different at least because it's one process per tab, which I wish were not necessary and wouldn't be necessary if we had better operating system conventions. But given what they have to work with, I don't think that's that bad. I'm not that worried about one process per browser tab that you have open because you're at least doing something at that point. You've at least got tabs open. So you as the user are asking the computer to do work. What I care about is 400 processes before you do anything. Like what the hell is that? You wonder if the 400 processes include the kernel tasks. Um, I don't know, but why should your kernel run that much? Like it's just not a good way of doing things. I can't wait till this is done and I can start working on an operating system. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, I, you know, honestly, I have way too much to do, but I might just as a learning experience, poke around and try to make something boot in a VM sometime just to do it. Like that would be fun. I really shouldn't do that. I have so many things to do. But like, oh my God, I'm so tired of everything. You wonder what my opinion would look like after actually attempting the task of writing an OS. Well, you know, I did go to computer science school and we did implement a very basic operating system at that time. So I kind of know what's involved, if that's what you're implying. I mean, it wasn't, you know, that's nothing near what you actually have to do to ship an OS to people in the real world. But like, I know what an OS does. Isn't that like saying I wrote a game on a 24 hour game jam. I know what it takes to make a triple A game. No, it's like saying I wrote a game in a six month long class in college where all we did was make that one game. It is easier to make it. It is hard to make people use it. Yeah, but you're talking to someone like my entire career in video games has been making games that people a priori have no reason to give you money for and want to use and getting them to do that, right? So like, it's not like I don't know anything about getting people interested in giving you money for something, right? I, I know some things about that. Not that it's easy. And in fact, it's getting harder over time, I believe, but it's, you know, it's not impossible. I actually want to do this just for giggles at some point. Someday this year, I will take a weekend off and try to get something to boot in a VM and we'll see how far we get. You would table this discussion until there is something tangible to discuss. I mean, that's another way of saying you bet that I'll fail because it's too hard. I don't, I don't fail at this kind of thing anymore. Like when I was young, I would fail at this kind of thing because I would give up and move on to a different project. But I know how to succeed at these things now. And once you know that it's, it's not that hard. I mean, again, I'm not guaranteeing that people would use such a thing. That's a little harder, but making, making an operating system, we can do that. Come on, bro.